Hey everyone, this is Ross. In today's video, I want to talk to you guys about jujubes. And this is really becoming one of my favorite fruits, I'm telling you guys. This is uh, something special. Um, this variety here is called Honey Jar. And believe it or not, I swear to you, it actually has honey in it. It tastes like honey. To me, it reminds me at this point like a honey apple because it has a really nice crunch. Like an apple but it's very sweet. And I'm almost certain that it's, it's creating its own nectar, which is a form of honey, just like a lot of my figs do here, guys. Some of my figs at the bottom of their, their eye here, let me see if I can get you guys one. Here's Smith. It's actually forming its own honey, its own nectar. And I find a lot of fruits do this. Maybe all fruits do this, I'm not sure. But the point is, uh, this is one of them and it's really good. It's really sweet. I want to show you guys my trees real quick. It has a pit on the inside and uh, that can just be eaten around. You can also let them dry on the tree. And if you let them dry, which they will do here, it's very incredible how even in this climate they'll dry. They'll get a different texture more sugar content. See those right there? That's dry, the really red one. And the texture will be just quite different. It's almost like eating an entirely different fruit. You kind of get two fruits in one with this tree. I'm going to see if I can pick this here. It may not be realistically perfect because it seems like something did get to this. But I'm going to take a bite. and show you the, the inside here and the texture. It's just very different. It's kind of like eating bread, sweet bread. People call these Chinese dates and that's inaccurate. They're nothing like a date. They are pretty sweet like a date, but uh, they're just a very good fruit. And this lasts on the counter. When you let them dry like this, this will last on your counter for really quite some time. Um, I do have some pretty spotty pollination it seems like here in this climate. I'm not sure if the bugs in the area really know what they're doing but some of these trees are just covered in flowers and I only get so much fruit set and I think a lot of it has to do with the pollinators. Um, I think parasitic wasps are probably the best pollinators for these jujubes and you can see over here on my fennel it's going to flower and there is a ton of parasitic wasps flying around in here that I think really do a good job of pollinating these jujubes, but I just don't have parasitic wasps, I think, at that time of the year. And you can see it over here on the sedum. There is many species of different parasitic wasps or even regular type wasps, you know, the yellow jackets um, that love that. But if I can get some kind of flowering plant to coincide with the jujube flowers, I think it might really be a big benefit. You can see this branch over here is actually really heavy with fruit. And uh, there's actually quite a few fruits on this variety. This is the honey jar. Um, this one seems to set well and also fruit well, whereas my, my Lee, believe it or not, my Lee has not fruited all that well for me um, this year. However, in years past, you can see how much it's grown. It's huge now. And the wind really blows these things because they're very lanky trees, guys. It's quite unfortunate. I've tried really hard to get them to bush out more horizontally. You can see how big that is. I mean, it's almost, it's at least 10 feet tall, um, my lee tree. Now, if I come over here, I can show you guys more of the fruit set. This is still on lee over here can see these are very large fruits on Lee. They have some of the largest and in fact I know a grower who's growing many varieties of these jujubes and recommends Lee the most. It has the largest fruit and it's the most consistent bearer in a climate such as mine. You know these are more desert like trees. They should be grown in the desert. They can definitely handle some drought but um, I find if it gets too dry, the fruits will drop off. The trees will be fine, but the fruits will certainly dry off. And in fact, I think they're less drought tolerant than figs. 
Um, in fact, my figs here need a lot less water than these jujubes do. So what I've done this year is I've actually changed up the siphon injectors here, the spot spitters down and for my irrigation. This is a almost, I think four times the water that my figs get. My figs get 3.6 gallons per hour emitters. I think this is like 12 point something. Um, and they're run for the same amount of time and they're just as happy. It's just that these trees and even the che here, my che tree that unfortunately drops every year, um, it just, they just need more water. I'm sorry, but the camera here, I'm trying to get my wire. But here's another variety that we grafted. Um, this is something called Zuzhou, and you can see the graft union down here. Um, I think that's where the graft union was, right here. And we grafted this onto Lang because I don't, I'm not really a big fan of Lang. It needs pollination, and the pollination here is very spotty, as I've mentioned. So maybe if I can get more parasitic wasps or something to come in at that time, we can get a better crop, but uh, Lang is one of those that's supposed to do really well, and it's a reliable one. It's very large, but my Zuzhou is putting out a ton of fruit, especially for such a young tree that, to me, it doesn't really matter to have Lang. I'm personally really a big fan of the Zuzhou variety now, with the amount of fruit that it's been putting out. Um, also, it really matters how early some of these are. That's a big thing to pay attention to. If you, if, you know, you live in a shorter season climate, you can see, like, look at all these flowers or remnants of flowers that never ended up getting pollinated. So um, this is my sugar cane. It's also a very early variety and a more reliable fruiter, but it has no fruit on it. So I think some of these just do better in other years. And, um, you know, maybe I can figure out the pollination part of this. My pomegranates have a similar issue with them, but you know, I don't know. It is what it is. I think we just have to deal with it. Maybe if I put one of these in the ground, I'd have better success with pollination, but it's a really wonderful fruit here, guys. Very sweet. Tastes a lot like honey, a honey apple. If you took an apple, an apple slice, and you had yourself some honey and you kind of dip the slice in honey. Um, that's what this would taste like. A more mild version of it. Not as rich, but really good. So that's the video here in Jujubes, guys. I think we'll do a video on the pruning of them a bit later. We did one last year just to try to get them to kind of bush out better. See if we can get that to work out to our benefit. But yeah, thank you all for watching this video on jujubes. Definitely grow them, man. I've had mixed results, but this is a year where I'm really thoroughly impressed. So I'll talk to you all soon. Take care, everyone.